Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sri Vishtakam Chito Ratanam Rajanam Bhava Maha Tavagnini Dvapanam Shri Akadipachandika Vitaranam Vidyavadu Jeevanam Anandam Burivardhanam Pradiparam Purnam Rutaswadhanam Sarvatmasnam Paramparam Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Namna Makari Baudha Ija Sarva Shaktis Tatrar Pita Niyamitta Shmaranina Kala Itadu Sita Vakupaya Bhagavan Mama Pi Turdhaiva Midrishami Ajani Nanuraga Trinada Pi Suni Jaina Tarora Pi Sahishnuna Amani na mana de na kirtaniya sadahari na dhanam na janam na sundari kavitam ba jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani shwari avatar bhakti rahai tukitvai ayi nanda tanu jakin karam patitam maam visame bavam budu vipayata vapada panka jastita duli satrisam vichintaya Nayanam galora shudharaya, padanam gadakadarudaya gira, Ulakai rinchitamba pokada, Tavanam adrahane bavisati, Juga itam nimishena, Chakusha prarusa itam, Sunya itam jagata sarvam, O vindavera hename, Aslishava padar tampinas to mam. Adarshanar marmahatam karotuva Jatata thaba vidadatu lampato Matranatas tu saivana parahat Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Shri Chitana Mahapurushi Kirstakam Ki Jai Namo Mahavadana Yo Krishna Primukhi Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtana, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life or repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan moment is the prime benediction for humanity at large. Because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon, it is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. O oh my Lord, your holy names alone can render all benediction to living beings, and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govind. In these transcendental names you have invested all your transcendental energies. There is not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names. My Lord, out of kindness you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names. But I'm so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. Once you chant the holy name of the Lord in humble state of mind, 
thinking oneself a lord and strolling street. One should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and should be ready to offer all respect to others. In such state of mind, one can change the whole name of the Lord constantly. O Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor do I desire beautiful women, nor do I want any number of followers. I only want your causeless devotional service, birth, and birth. O son of Maharaj, Nan, Krishna. I am your eternal servitor, yet some or other I've fallen in this ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. O oh, my Lord, when will my eyes will be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up? I will the hairs and my body stand and end a recitation of O oh, Govinda, feeling your separation, I consider the moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rains, and I feel all vacant in the world in your absence. I know no one that Krishna is my Lord, and he should remain so, even if it handles me roughly by his embrace, or makes me broken hearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything, but he is always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. She, 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 Now let us consider the ten offenses in matter of chanting the holy name of the Lord, and they must be avoided. They are as follows. One, blaspheme the void is ready to get a life for the progression of holy name. Equal to independent of the name of the Lord. Three, to disobey the orders of the spiritual master. Four, to blaspheme the Vedic literature or literature and pursuance of it. Five, to consider the glory of chanting Hare Krishna as imagination. Six, and an entire material attachment. I understand so many instructions. It is also an offense to be an attentive watcher. Every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must carefully guard against these tenets in order to quickly receive the desired success. Krishna Prema. Now let us face the sons of Vaishnava. But it's the Lord. They are just like desired Jews that can fulfill the desires of everyone. And they're full of compassion for the fallen conditions. Mancha called Patra Gisha. He passed in the Via Bacha, but the Tanam Pavani device. Ah, I snub a Takuri. He might bargain with Tom, Gruntaraj, Gij. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Nam Nasrina Sadani Rasta Kurukam Satyam Paranti Mahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. 
It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Paramo Nimatsanam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mur Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kimba Purir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Avurudyate Tra Viti Bihi Sususubis Dakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavad by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpaturur Galitam Falam Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Sami Vipata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarian juice was already relishable for all, Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantak Stobhadrani Vidu Nati Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. It is itself is itself a righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nastapresu Badresu Dityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavata and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Nadarajas tamo bhavo Kamalobadayas chaye 
Chite Taranapidam Sitvan Satve Prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam Prasanna Manaso Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana Mukta Sangha Sijayate when these pure impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his, pos in his position of pure goodness. <clears throat> Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya chiyante chashikarmani vista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, and verse number 13. Sartraiva mevi bharata ujadanda yukmam Gandiva Lakshanam Arativa Dayaveva Sedra Shritayad Anubavitam Ajamida Tena Hamadya Usita Purushena Bhumna Translation by Srila Prabhupada. When I stayed for some days as a guest in the heavenly planets, all the heavenly demigods, including King Indra Dev, took shelter from my arm, which were marked with the Gandiva bow, to kill the demon named Nivatakavacha, O king, descendant of Ajamida. At the present moment, I am bereft of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by whose influence I was so powerful. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The heavenly demigods are certainly more intelligent, powerful, and beautiful, and yet they had to take help from Arjuna because of his Gandiva bow, which was empowered by the grace of Lord Sri Krishna. The Lord is all powerful, and by his grace, his pure devotee can be as powerful as he may desire. As, as he meaning as Krishna desires, not the devotee. And there is no limit to it. And when the Lord withdraws his power from anyone, he is powerless by the will of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Kije. So this is very, very important information. Because the devotee depends completely on Krishna. Because he realizes that he himself is powerless. How can we overcome Maya, who has incredible powers? How can we overcome the material energy, which is the Lord's inferior spiritual energy? Therefore, it's it's impossible to overcome it. But all these things become possible when one is completely surrendered and depends completely on the protection of Krishna. This is not understood by most people. In fact, 
there's a long history, right, from the beginning of time of people who challenged such um, thoughts and insist on the independence of the living entity and depend on the reliance of the strength of the living entity and especially through science. Science is what convinced many, scientific advancement is what convinced many philosophers that there is really no need for God because they can emulate powers of God through science. Well, first of all, they don't understand the length and breadth of all the powers of God. Therefore, what have they actually emulated? Well, they've emulated some or most of the mystical yogic powers through science, not through yoga. So they can fly through the air, they can go underwater, they can walk on water in the sense of, you know, having a boat. They uh, can explore a little bit of outer space with rockets. They can fly through the air with airplanes. And uh, they can seemingly you know, extend the period of life, not really, but it looks like it, through techniques such as uh, replacing organs, putting in some kinds of different kinds of injections of minerals and vitamins and so forth. They can uh, also create things, build things like bridges, tunnels, uh, putting all kinds of uh, electronic communications. They more or less emulated the mystic powers, but what they don't understand is those powers are material, they're not spiritual. And they're trying to emulate them also by going to other planets in the universe. So, but as they uh, advance in science, although at one time, like in the 19th century, 20th century, it looked like science would also solve the problem of death, but it hasn't. But on the other hand, scientists have figured out ways of killing people more efficiently and faster. <laughs> Before fighting with the, you know, swords and hatchets and things like that, you know, you could kill a hundred or, or a thousand people sometimes. But with an atomic bomb, you can kill hundreds and thousands of people at once and destroy a huge amount of uh, property. So, you know, wars are won by de being, being destructive. You destroy farms and so there's no food. You destroy uh, buildings so there's no, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, a command, and, uh, command post, right? Uh, just like uh, uh, the destruction of the Twin Towers was supposed to destroy the American economy, because the stock market was there. The New York stock market was in the in towers. And they thought well, they, they would destroy the whole economy of the United States by knocking the Twin Towers down. Well, they, they hurt the United States. They didn't destroy it. So wars are won by destruction. <clears throat> and, and science has been used to, for... Uh, for more destructive stuff than constructive stuff. So, but science has not really uh, advanced very much in the last hundred years. Most of the big advancements happened in the 1890s to 1920. After that, other things have happened, but they're, they're just extensions of what they discovered at that time. <clears throat> so, Therefore, they're, they're struggling right now to come up with something new. They can't even come up with a virus uh, 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 
uh, what do you call that, a vaccine. So uh, they haven't made a lot of, like, like I said, modern times they have not made a lot of uh, discover major discoveries. But the most major discovery would be that Krishna is the source of all power. The, the Brahma Jyoti uh, sustains the spiritual and material world. So the spiritual and material world are based on the Brahma Jyoti, which is the energy of the Lord. And uh, therefore, Prabhupada explains uh, how Arjuna was, you know, a jiva. He's not. He's not. Uh, although he has his father is uh, Indra, so Indra is a demigod and, and a chief demigod. So Arjuna has some you know, demigod powers. But actually, he had greater powers than the demigod because he became a devotee, and Krishna endowed him with those powers. And therefore, even the demigods could not defeat this demon uh, who was bothering them. But this nivataka, nivata kavacha. But uh, Krishna had—I mean, Arjuna had the power to kill him. So, Prabhupada says, the Lord is all-powerful, and by his grace, his pure devotee can be as powerful as the Lord may desire. And there is no limit to it. Yeah. And when the Lord, like, for example, Hanuman, Hanuman was able to fly through the sky and carry a mountain. Now, who can do that? Who can carry a mountain through the sky? Nobody. But Hanuman was able to do it just with the strength of his arms and his back. So that's because he was empowered by Lord Ramachandra. So therefore, here it says, uh, his pure devotee can be as powerful as the Lord may desire, and there's no limit to it. And when the Lord withdraws his power from anyone, that person is powerless by the will of the Lord. So he can give and he can take back, because it belongs to him, it doesn't belong to us. We we just get it uh, uh, on uh, uh, we just we're just borrowing something, which is in, in fact it's a gift of the Lord, and then He takes it back when He when He thinks that it's not needed anymore. So this is the reality. Now, if we want to be powerful, not to enjoy sense gratification, but in order to do wonderful things for Krishna. Not that Krishna needs us to do anything for him because he's self-sufficient, but he takes pleasure in seeing his devotee do wonderful things. And sometimes it even looks like the devotee can do things that Krishna can't do. That's not true, but it looks like that because Krishna empowers the devotee, like Vyasa, Deva, or Arjuna, to do incredible things that are beyond the scope of normal human beings and are on the level of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So if we understand this one thing today, we will make a lot of spiritual advancement. What is that one thing? That the Lord is all-powerful, and if he wants, he can empower his devotee to be uh, extremely powerful. I mean, seemingly beyond any human expectation. And there's no limit to it, as long as the devotee is using that power to please the Lord and to do the work of the Lord. And when the Lord withdraws the power from the devotee, then the devotee becomes powerless by the will of the Lord. This is a reality. Everything else, science can do this, science could do that, is a bunch of nonsense. And uh, it just misleads, uh, let's say, innocent or low-information people think that the scientists can actually keep those type of promises. Like, you know, we're going to the moon. Well, no, there's no water on the moon. So, oh, okay, we'll go to Mars. Oh, there's no this or that on Mars. So we'll go to Venus. Or we'll go. It's, they're always, it's called hope against hope, giving a new hope to replace the old hope was not achieved.
Okay, are there any questions? When the Lord disappeared, he took the power away from the Yadavas and Arjuna. Because without the presence of the Lord, there was a great chance that the Yadavas would have become corrupted even though they're his direct descendant. When you have such power, it's very easy to misuse it. Therefore, he took all the power away from them and, and he made an arrangement so that they would kill each other. There was no need for them to be around and being so powerful like that, uh, they could have easily deviated. Let's say someone gives you the power to become invisible and fly through the air. Uh, would you use it only for a good purpose or would you sometimes use it in other ways? What do you think? Let's say you wanted to spy on an enemy. Would you use your power? Of course. You, say. you can become invisible and fly through the air anywhere. So you could go right to your enemy's office and he wouldn't realize it. And you can find out all his secrets and then come back and then defeat him. So you wouldn't be able to do that with your normal powers. So when a person has such powers, it's very easy for them to misuse it. The Lord will give it until his purpose is accomplished and then take it back so you don't get corrupted. Because without the direct presence of the Lord, it's very easy to forget and get puffed up. Okay, oh, where is this? Yes. Well, he's the, is the, uh, I guess, the grand sire of uh, demons because Nivataka Vacha is a descendant of Ajami. Right? It says here, to kill the demon named Nivataka Vacha, O king, descendant of Ajamida. Oh, the king, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Arjuna is the, uh, yeah, you just, I'm sorry, yes, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know, we'll have to find out. Or, let's see, let's see, let's see, it's, it's probably here. Okay. All righty, 745, yeah. Thus, Maharaj Dhritarashtra, the scion of the family of Ajamita, firmly convinced by introspective knowledge, Pragya, broke at once the strong network of familiar affection. Okay, so he's a... He's a uh, He's a ancestor of the Kuru dynasty. Let's see what it says in the purport. It mentions Ajamida. No, so anyway, he's mentioned in uh, Canto 1, chapter 13, verse 29. Canto 1. Chapter 13, verse 29, where Maharaj Dhritarashtra is the Skyan, meaning he's born into or a son of the family of Ajamita. So he's some kind of origin, he's at the origin of the Kuru dynasty.
Chapter 9. Oh, Canto 9. Oh, oh yeah. Huh? Okay. Is he the original father of that uh, thing? Okay, yeah. So he's the grandsire of the uh, of the Kuru dynasty. Good. Hadi Bo, where is the Sila Prabhupada? Sheila Prabhupada. 